www.montelionmanpaleweight.com and I am here today with my coach Rudy Huber um, aka Satan or the devil himself we can talk about that later <laughs> um, and I wanted to just do a quick video talking about what kind of shoes should you wear uh, when you just first start sprinting at any age so that's what we're talking about today um, I'm going to give my opinion because that's not what I'm really good at Yes, you are. <laughs> and then we'll talk to him because he's the expert. He used to own a running shoe store. Yeah, so uh, he's the expert. But I'll give what I think first, and then we can get some feedback. Okay, so I am currently running in these New Balance. It's pre-season for me, and I'm running on the grass, so I want a little bit more support. I think one of the things that most people make a mistake with is that they think sprinting, and they think they have to buy I do have sprint flats as well. I have these New Balance. They're called Fresh Foam uh, SPTs and they're very, very light. And there's actually just not really a lot of support here. And I'm not gonna be wearing these anytime soon. I'm gonna wait until I have some really fast days on the track for these. Um, okay, so there's also, I'm actually not a really big fan of Nike at all. Um, I think that there are definitely some foot problems that come from Nike shoes and we can talk about that. But the Nike Pegasus is actually a pretty decent all-around track shoe. And we're going to talk a little bit about if you're pronating or supinating, but this is a general track shoe. Um, and then we'll talk about that first and then we'll get into spikes. So I guess my question to you is, what is your recommendation for, so we're looking at people who have never sprinted before and they want to just start out with warm up. They're going to start out with hills. They're going to really, really progress slowly. Remember, don't start fast, start slow to be fast. So they're going to progress slowly. And um, what kind of shoe should they be looking for? Like I, one of my friends went to Ross and just picked up a pair of Nikes that were there on sale and she ended up getting shin splits, which I think is a common thing. So what do you think about what kind of shoe you should start with? Well, one of the biggest things you got to know about your foot itself. And, and where your foot plants on the ground. So you have to know whether you're a neutral planter or you're, you're a supinator, pronator, what have you. So you need to know that first. Uh, a lot of people, what they do is they just, so they just pick it up and oh, this is a beautiful looking shoe and da 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 da, that's it. Next thing you know, like you said, they, they end up getting shin splints and other things. So you really need to know what type of foot that you do have. So if you do have uh, if you're a person that uh, pronates a lot, then you're going to need a little more inside support. So a lot of times, when you go to the store and you see a way to find one of those type of shoes, is when you look at something like this, you can look on the inside of the shoe where the, where the, uh, where the foam part is. And a lot of them have like a dark colored um, piece right here. What that does is just kind of just kind of pulls you back out a little bit. So uh, that's one of the pretty easy ones. And mostly all of the shoe companies have that type of design in there. Um, the other one is if you supinate or if you're a neutral, uh, neutral person, uh, a lot of times a lot of the supinators will get more of the, of the neutral shoe. And um, those are usually white on the outside or on the inside. And they may have a little bit of a um, support on the outside just to kind of just barely kind of knock you in a little bit okay okay that leads me to the question so how would you know if you're a supinator or a pronator the, e the easiest way is when i had my shoe store was i would actually look at the bottom of the shoe especially if they wear shoes all the time and stuff like that i would just look at the bottom um, and you can see exactly where they plant you can look at where it's, like where, it's worn. where it's worn and you can look if it's more on the inside then you know most likely these people kind of pronate inwards a little bit uh, if it's more on the outside then you know that they kind of go out so they kind of like uh, supinate a little bit if it's worn down the right down the middle then you know that this person's a true yeah. so that you kind of want to find out right off the bat instead of just going to the store just picking up whatever you want and a lot of like You'll see that with a lot of people, they'll just go and they'll just get the shoe, uh, especially with kids and stuff like that too. Uh, 
Um, you're also going to need to know, well, am I high arch, low arch, and all that other stuff. A lot of the high arch people, you want to get a shoe that's kind of flexible in the middle. So you want to know that too. Um, and so if you have a more flexible shoe, then that's more for a high arch person. If this person's a little more low arch, you want maybe a little more of a wider base um, to it. Um, and that'll kind of stick out a little bit better. All right. Okay, so we've got our basic recommendation. Find out if you're a supinator or a pronator or if you're neutral. And um, definitely start out with a shoe that has a little bit more support than not supportive. Because um, in my opinion, if you're just starting out, you're going to need to really strengthen all your stabilizing muscles. And if you're not strong enough to do that yet, if you're not strong enough with all those muscles yet, then you're going to need a little bit of support from your shoe. Okay, so after you progress to your maybe your sprint flat, which is a little bit lighter with less support, um, the next thing would be your spikes. So in my book, Fast Over 40, um, which I just have available on Amazon, I talk about not starting with a spike that's too stiff on the bottom. I actually recommend Saucony as a starting point, and that's because their beginner spikes are very flexible, like this, and they do have some support. So my opinion is that Saucony would be a really good starting spike. Now, I use Under Armour spikes, um, and it's very stiff, so you can see it's not bending at all. But I definitely do not recommend that for a starting spike because it puts a lot of tension on especially your Achilles and your other tendons and your ankles. But once you progress, and it took me probably about two years to get in, maybe at least a year and a half, to get into a spike this stiff. Um, the other thing I would say is that certain Nike spikes definitely are linked to Achilles issues. So again, my opinion only, but I prefer these now. Um, they're Under Armour Speed Form. I think it's called Speed Form 2. Um, this is my preferred spike now, but I started out in Socrates. Okay, so you got my opinion about spikes. Let's hear from the expert. <laughs> what do you think about spikes? Well, I mean, I used to compete in a, a few different ones, and uh, it really depends on the person, too. But I used to compete in Nike. I used to also compete heavily in, in Mizuno. They just really worked for me because they were very light. Uh, and they were also flexible for me. Uh, I have more of a high arch and I'm a neutral person, so uh, the Nike and the, um, and the Mizuno really work. Um, if you're just starting out, and, you know, especially for like kids and stuff like that, if they're just coming out, or even even anybody that's just coming out, um, I would recommend, like you said, um, something a little more flexible, maybe with a little more of a, of a, uh, of a padding. So maybe start off with that first, and then as they progress and they start to get better and their form gets better, then maybe graduate to more of like a stiffer spike, like you said right here. Uh, I used to wear a stiffer spike as, as I got faster and then my, in my competition too. Um, there's other people that are more like, uh, you, know, you try to tell them to go off the balls of your feet, and some people just don't do that. So there are some that have a little more of a heel in the back. So uh, those that have a little bit of a heel strike, uh, they, they might want to buy one that has a little bit of a heel uh, cushion in the back. But again, it really depends on the person, it really depends on their style of running and what have you. And if they're strong enough to handle something like this with more of a stiffer, uh, a stiffer plate. Um, but again, for me, um, you know, the Nike and the Mizuno for yourself, you have the, uh, the Under Armour, and, you know, everybody has their kind of their preference. Uh, but one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to make you don't want to make sure that you just don't jump into spikes because that's going to be a killer. You're just coming out and you just think I got to put spikes on all the time whenever I come out on the track. You know, we just save that for your technical days, maybe your block work, maybe you're doing some speed stuff that you need it. Uh, but you don't need to wear it all the time. Okay, so to recap uh, one more time, we're looking for shoes to start sprinting with that have a little bit more support because you're going to start on hills, you're going to start on the grass. Um, then when you graduate to being strong enough, you can move to a lighter sprint flat on some days, on your fast days, um, or you could just do an all-around type neutral shoe. You have to find out if you're a supinator or pronator, very important. Um, and then 
then don't jump into spikes right away. How long would you say until, until spikes if you've never sprinted before and you're just starting? Just six months. I would maybe. Least, four to six months and really wait till your, your form gets down and you're actually on the track and you're doing a few things. But you know, if you can stay away from the spikes if you're doing like your beginning intervals and stuff like that, you're doing you know the twos and the fours and all that other stuff. You know, you're to work with maybe some shorter stuff and you, and you know that maybe you're not doing the quantity you know you maybe just want to try them out a little bit then yeah maybe slap them on um, and maybe you just want to throw them off or maybe like uh, some, some some of your accelerations you know some people do like 40 meter accelerations or 50 meters that might be a good time to just kind of just maybe slap them on just to kind of get used to them uh, that way you're not shocked when you actually put them on that's that's a good point you do want to practice in them some before you race, definitely. Um, but we can get to that another day. This is just the basic, what shoes do you start with? Um, thank you for joining us and hope you enjoyed it.